Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how to manage ref errors in Excel. We're going to start with two simple examples and then we're going to be focused on ref errors in financial modeling. I'm going to teach you what triggers ref errors, how to troubleshoot it, and most importantly, how to avoid it at all. So, if you're still struggling on managing these errors, stay tuned and let's gonna get started. So, what is an ref error? Simply put, an ref error is an error that occurs whenever a formula references a cell that no longer exists or is not valid. Let me give you two examples of each one of these cases. In the first case, we're going to see a formula that references a cell that no longer exists. So we're going to have three numbers, one, two, and three, and I'm going to add them together by reference equals to F6 plus F7 plus F8. We have six, and let me just add a top border, so we can see the difference, uh, we, can see, we can see more easily what's going on here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select row number seven, and I'm going to remove it by press Control minus. And we have a ref error now. That's because the formula that is being calculated now is reference the cell that no longer exists. The reference was correct before. So let me go Control Z and we're going to return to the previous state of the model. So the reference now is valid. But once I come over here and I remove it, the reference is no longer valid because that cell does not exist. So, this is the first case. Let's going to see a second case now. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say, I'm going to have days. So it's going to be a number of days. So, each one of these rows represents a different day. Now, I'm going to have here a temperature. Temperature. Nice. So let's say, I'm going to just make it up the numbers in here. 23, 24, 21, 20, 22, 23, 25, and 20, 20. That's fine. And I'm going to calculate now the average, but I'm going to calculate the average for the last three days. So average of three days. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. What I'm going to have here, we're going to have equals to the average. And I'm going to get last three days. So this should return to us the average of the last three days, right? So if I put here 20 and 20, we're going to have the average as 20. And if you put 22, 21 and 20, we're going to have 21. Good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this above. So Ctrl C and I'm going to press Ctrl V up to this cell here. And if you can see, if you see here, what we have is just the average being calculated correctly to the previous three days because our range is properly anchored. So as if you copy and paste things above, we're going to have always the average being calculated to the previous three days. And when you come to the second day, what we have is the average of the last two days, right? And that's on purpose. I left, I will leave like this on purpose. And there is no error here because the reference is correct. We do have a reference from K1 to K3, but the average is being calculated between these two cells, which is 21.5. So if I put here now 21, the average is going to be 20.5. The question is now, what if I copy this now and paste above? We're going to have a ref error. And why is that? That's because the range is referenced to a cell that doesn't exist. In this case, what this range here is doing is reference a potential cell named K0 to K2. But K0 does not exist, reason why we have a ref error. So here we have the two most common examples. And to be honest, I cannot think about any other sort of example that's going to generate an F, a ref error. The first one is a formula reference a cell that no longer exists. The cell was there before and no longer it is. And the second one is when a formula is referenced a range that is not valid. Right? So these are the two cases when you're going to have ref errors. Very nice. So now that you know what a ref error is, the second question is, how do you fix it? And most of the time, it's going to be quite straightforward to fix it, as long as you spot the mistake straight away or a few comments after doing the mistake. So in this case, what you have to do is just to press Ctrl Z or to 
undo your pasting. Let me show you. So if I press Ctrl Z here, you see that the first error is gone because that was the last comment I did. But now I want to fix this error here, the one on F8. I'm going to keep pressing Ctrl Z or you can also undo. I have my undo command on my, on my top bar and Excel, which can be accessible by pressing Alt 5. But I never go here. I also press Ctrl Z. Ctrl Z is just a, just a parenthesis here. Ctrl Z is such an important command, or the undo is such an important command that you have to know in, in Excel that I don't even know where it is on the menu bar. The only thing I know is you have to press Ctrl Z to do it. So just keep just keep that in mind and also press always press Ctrl Z. So I'm gonna press Ctrl Z. And eventually I get back to the state of the model where everything was working. But there is two drawbacks with this way of fixing the ref error. The first one is that we cannot go too many commands back by pressing Ctrl Z. You cannot undo unlimited amount of amount of commands in Excel. There's a limit. So if you make a mistake and then you have several other commands that change a lot of things in your Excel, you may not be able to get back to the original state. So that's the first drawback. The second one is that eventually you're going to make a mistake, such as the one I did here. Then I'm going to do a bunch of things in Excel that is going to be very useful for what I'm doing. And then in order to fix the first mistake that you did, you have to press Ctrl Z and you're going to undo all this work that you have done. So you're going to waste a lot of time to redo everything. So this is the second drawback. So there's a third way you can fix it which is basically fixing the mistake, right? So let's say this calculation, this calculation is correct. So the only thing you have to do is you find it, press F2 and delete the reference that you have in your formula. And that's it. So now you have to fix this one here. So essentially what you have to do basically is the average of this number, which is 20. So, and there we go. So we have to fix it manually. So you don't waste the time that you had to do all these things in here, but I was going to go back to the financial model and see how we're going to do it there because that can be a bit more complex. Let's go there. So when dealing with financial models, the ref errors is quite frightening because you see these ref errors all over the place. So in this example, we have ref errors, not only the sheet that where we are right now, and you can see the ref errors are all over the rows, but we also have these errors in other sheets. So we have these errors in the return sheet, I also have them on the tag sheets and I might I might have it somewhere else also, right? So it can be quite frightening. And the question is, how do you fix it? So the first one, of course, is to press Ctrl Z, right? So you go back and you fix it. But in financial modeling, most of the time, you're going to do it in a different way. So how do you troubleshoot it in your financial model? First, we're going to press Ctrl F and we're going to open up the find and replace box. Then what you can do, we're going to just type hashtag ref and in the within field, we're going to select the workbook. So we want to search for the ref within your entire workbook and I'm going to press find all. There we go. I'm going to just make it bigger. And here we're going to start troubleshooting to find where the mistake is. Because this mistake is, is quite easy, it's going to be very simple to fix it. But sometimes it can be a bit more complex because eventually we're going to make two or three ref errors and then you have to find out all those things, right? Okay, let's gonna keep going here. So first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna see in which sheet the ref error is. And if you're gonna scroll down, what we see is that every single error comes out of the that sheet where we are right now. So that's done. Then I'm gonna look on the cell and I'm gonna see whether this is a error coming from a column or from a row. And how are we gonna do it? If every single reference here refers to the same row, in this case 31. That means that your mistake has been done by a reference that is being used on row 31. Uh, likewise, if you see here all reference to the same column, let's say column K or column A, so it means that something's wrong in that column. So you have to go to that particular column. So we know here that our mistake is on row 31. We start in column K and going all the way to AO. So I'm going to click twice and I'm going to now close the window. Because when I click twice there, my cell now is highlighted exactly where the mistake is. And if I press, I'm going to just zoom in. I'm going to press F2. And you can see now that we have the ref errors times the K19. And if I scroll up, I can see that the K19 is what? Is a flag. 
Right, so we're looking into a flag. Let me go back here, let's go to the next one, and you can see that everything is being multiplied by the ref error times the flag. So we have what well, the tenor flag, so that some be some reference referring to the tenor of our debt. And if I go here, I know that's the interest rate initial debt. So basically what we're doing here, we're checking which periods we should calculate the interest rate. So we have to bring that information somehow that was deleted. I'm going to just press Ctrl Z. Let's see if I can go back all the way to the initial state. So I'm going back now to the previous example I was presenting to you. Let's see if I can go back. And here you go. See, I'm going to press Ctrl Y so we can see where I was. So we had this state here. And if I press Ctrl Z, bam, bam, we have here the term interest rate. So it's a named cell that is referring back to our input sheet. And when we have it, everything is properly calculated. So that's basically it. So another way to do it. So once we find out the error, what we can do if we want to fix it manually, you can just go here. You can say this is going to be to the interest interest rate. So where that is, let me just going to show. Here we go. So this term int rate. There we go. It's the term. Let me just fix it. So it's going to be equal to the term int rate. I'm going to press enter. Then I'm just going to format it. So it's going to be an input, and it's going to be a percent. Actually, that should be an external input. Where is it? It's over here. And there we go. And now we have to fix the formula for each one of the cells. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to delete. And I'm going to refer back here by properly anchoring it. I'm going to copy and paste. And everything was properly fixed. The model is back to its original state. Next is how to avoid it at all. But before I explain to you how to do it, just make sure you subscribe to this channel and give me a thumbs up if you're learning things on this video. That's gonna get back there. So how to avoid it? The best way to avoid ref errors is to really pay attention to what you're doing, particularly when you are deleting stuff. Let me zoom in and I'm gonna give an example. Let's gonna assume you want to delete this row, the entire row for the Great Spirit flag. So if I'm going to do it, just select the row by pressing Shift Space and then removing it by pressing Ctrl Minus. Of course, we're going to have ref errors and we're going to have it pretty much everywhere in this sheet. So what we should do to avoid it. So if you really want to delete, I'm just going to go back to the previous state. So you can see I'm going to just press Ctrl Z until I get back to where I was. So if you really want to delete this row in here, the first thing, the first thing you need to do is to check where are these cells in row 20 are being referenced by other formulas. And the easier way to do it, you just go to one of the cells, go to formula and click on trace dependence. And you can see that this cell here is only being referenced by the cells below it. And I'm gonna give another example. So if you press now here, the trace depends on the cell below, you can see that this cell here is being referenced in several other places including in other sheets as represented by this little little box here. And if you click twice in this black arrow, you can see where this, this is being referenced. And then if you click OK, we're going to go there, right? So this is where it's coming from. So if you can see the reference goes to that M21. And now if I press Control bracket, so I'm going to go get back there, right? So that's cool. So let me going to remove it so you can click in Remove Arrows. Or you can use the shortcut. That's usually what I do. You press Alt M A A, and I'm going to remove all the arrows. Okay. So if you want to go to see which ones are dependent on these cells, you can press Alt M D, and you can see. And you can also use the trace dependence. Or tra sorry, trace precedence. Is where is it coming from? So Alt M M P, and then you can see that this here it's coming from this formula. Of course, this is reference here over here and over here. So that's how you're going to use the trace dependence and trace precedence. So I'm going to just remove everything now. So let's go back. We want to remove this cell. So what do we have to do? We have to erase from every cell that's re referenced back to this one, the reference here, right? So what are we going to do? I just have to remove or I have to change this cell here so it no longer is referenced back to the K20. So I'm going to just delete it and I'm just going to copy and paste across. And here we go. So if now I come over here and click on trace dependence, so Alt M T, you're gonna see that there is no dependence for this cell. So now you can commonly and safely delete everything. One more thing, 
we're also deleting this cell here. So you need to make sure that this cell also does not have any dependence on this. So I'm going to press Alt M D and it does, but it does depend on every single cell that we're going to remove. So we're going to remove all those cells in here. So if you're going to select here and remove everything, there's going to be no ref errors because they're going to erase everything. So I'm going to press Ctrl minus and as predicted, nothing has changed. Okay, our model now has mistakes because this, this flex here are no longer what they used to be. But the matter of fact is that the model has no ref errors. So I'm going to go back now to where we are. And here you go. We are not able to go back. And this is the case where you have to troubleshoot the model yourself. And why are you not able to go back to the previous state or to the original state of our model? It is because whenever you use the trace dependence and trace precedence, you are no longer able to get back to, to, a, to a state of the model previous to that point. So that's why you will have to troubleshoot the model on your own, right? So folks, that's it for today. Again, please subscribe to the channel, help me to reach 1000 subscribers, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice one. Bye.